this podcast is brought to you by Aldis International, supplying your expert AI and digital transformation staffing needs across the U.S. and Europe. Today, you are listening to our AI in Action series, where leading minds in AI from across the world share their story, success, and advice. AI in Action cuts through the hype and explores the true impact of artificial intelligence in our world today. You're listening to AI in Action. I'm your host, JP Valentine. Our guest today is Francis Shanahan. Francis is the Vice President of Application Software at Peloton. Francis, welcome to the show. Thanks, JP. So good to be here. We've been looking forward to this one for a while. So uh, let's jump straight into it because we've got a lot to cover. Um, Let's start with yourself, Francis. Can you give us a, a background of your journey in tech from what made you get started? Some of the roles you've held along the way, walking us through your journey and will take us up to today as you recently moved to Peloton. Yeah, happy to do that. I have been at this a while. I've been, I think, 50% of my life now has been in the New York tri-state area. The other 50 haven't grown up in Ireland and Dublin and various parts of the country, Tipperary. And so I have a little bit of a farming and a little bit of a city background. I guess going back to the beginning, I was exposed and surrounded uh, by people who stimulated my curiosity and encouraged imagination, whether it was through art, building things, woodwork, you name it, there was always something going on. And that just naturally led me, I think, to the the blank canvas, if you like, of computers. I was drawn to them initially because of video games. I grew up in the 80s, and those were just, again, another way to capture your imagination. And my first computer, I remember saving up, was a, an Atari 130XE. I don't know if, if anyone out there remembers that that machine, but that was the competitor to the Commodore 64. And actually, you know, what? maybe I'm dating myself. I might not uh, might not be the best idea to go into this much detail, but yeah, twice the memory, twice the memory of the Commodore 64, a whole 128 KB. But I got that thing. I saved up for it with the paper routes and things. And I remember obviously playing games, but starting very quickly to try to figure out how to use it, how to write code for it. And self-taught, I I did start building games myself. In the very beginning, I I wrote a couple of different things. One of them that sticks in my mind is a quiz game that the reason it sticks in my mind is just my dad, and I got to give him credit for fostering this kind of in me, was just the biggest supporter. Like he, he wanted to use the game and be the be that user tester. And it was a general knowledge quiz game. And uh, we had a lot of fun with that. I know people struggle oftentimes to try to find a career path. And you're going through, whether it's secondary school in Ireland or high school in the US, and you're figuring out, what am I going to do for college? Uh, For me, it was never really a question. It was just, I'm going to do computers or something related to, to computers. And I was fortunate again, because I grew up just literally down the road from Dublin City University, which at the time was the center for software engineering for all of Europe. So I had a great education just sitting right there on my doorstep and just met some great people who I'm still friends with today. And that was really the launching pad to my career. I had a job straight out of school, actually before I graduated here in the US. I actually had to go back to Ireland to complete graduation in the fall and the rest is history. So that that got me my start. I started in a, a company called Sapien as a consultant and you couldn't have asked for a better start to a career it exposed me to just so much here in the tri-state whether it was some of the dot-com companies some of the y2k companies again apologies i'm I'm dating myself y2k was the the year 2000 problem when the date rolled over everyone was worried that their bank accounts were going to be zeroed out because we couldn't have zero zero date so yeah i did a, a lot of work around that problem. Luckily, it turned out to be not a problem because of how things played out. But again, the years I spent at Sapien gave me a really great, broad exposure to a lot of different industries. And that set me up for kind of the next step, which was my time in fintech. I spent about six, six and a half years at Citigroup in the corporate bank. And again, met some great people there. A lot of what I did in the bank was actually building tools for other developers to use. So you know, things that would make the development process simpler, make it more consistent. And we supported about 300, 400 developers through various different initiatives, all of which were part of CityDirect, which is the flagship product in the corporate bank. During that time, as things just 
turned out, I actually started writing a book. It had kind of been on my book bucket list, if you like. And I was approached by Wiley. I had been writing for magazines for MSDN and, and different publications. And Wiley approached me to write a, a book that they were doing a series on different companies, Amazon, Google, Yahoo, and others. And they wanted a book on Amazon. And I had written some articles on Amazon. This was back in the very early days, you could say, before Amazon Web Services uh, were really a thing. We figured out what a table of contents might look like, and I ended up writing a book, which was literally called Amazon Mashups about Amazon Web Services. And I guess to give you an idea of the time frame of what was happening at the time, when I, I it took about six months to write, another six months of editing, and as it was going to print, S3 launched, and my publisher asked me, could I add a chapter specifically on S S3? So the simple storage service of AWS and uh, fast forward to today, it's one of the biggest platforms uh, in cloud computing. So that was all while I was at City, but it helped me build my network and connect with other folks. Having grown up in Dublin, I really had no desire to move to Seattle. I love Seattle, but the weather, I just, I need a little bit more sunshine in my life. <laughs> and so I was quite happy here on the East Coast, but all the while thoughts of maybe moving to Amazon or a more tech-centric uh, company were there and the opportunity popped up to join Audible, which is uh, a leading audiobook, the leading audiobook company in the world. And they're based right here in New Jersey in, the, in our backyard. So really fortunate to, to join them at a time when they were still grappling with the integration, if you like, into Amazon's ecosystem. They were an acquisition, so they had their own business, their own set of systems. And I joined them towards the tail end of their acquisition about three or four years in, in 2012. And through that experience, I got to learn all of Amazon's ecosystem, much of which was still being built and do a, a bunch of different things. As example, we were part of the very first Prime Day in 2015. We made Audible a Prime benefit. And as you would imagine, when you're exposed to the type of traffic that Amazon retail receives, it's just the, the need to scale your systems and to have them be just super robust is paramount. So that, you know, taught me a ton. It was just an amazing learning experience and an incredible ride to be on. Part of the Audible integration into Kindle, into Alexa and the Echo. But the other thing I think that I learned at Amazon was just the, the customer obsession and that connection to customers. And we would have customers who, who would reach out to us literally thanking us for the product and for what it had meant to them, whether it was getting them through a difficult time in their life, maybe helping them get back on their feet after perhaps an injury or rehabilitation. That source of content in their ears, the storytelling, the intimacy of it really resonated with a lot of people. And that just lit a spark in me as far as obsessing that customer value. And there's a lot more I could say there, but I'll edit myself. And that I think is what led me ultimately to Peloton, which is where I'm at today. And we're obsessed about our members, about our community and putting out the very best product that we can and the best experience for everybody. Francis, thank you for the detailed background of your journey. I think it's always very helpful to hear from senior leaders and, and trailblazers in this field of where it started, and why they've done what they've done. I think it really speaks to just how many great organizations that you've worked for that you omitted the fact that you also had a period as the head of engineering for Nike, a sneaker brand, which I'm sure we can get to in a little bit. But you've played nicely into where you're at currently, which is Peloton. Oh, very quickly has become one of the, the most recognized brands across fitness. Talk to us about why Peloton what brought you to them? And then give us some insight into your role as the, the VP of application software. Yeah, absolutely. And and that was an omission, an accidental omission on my part. I did spend a wonderful year and a half at Nike, part of the swoosh family, just a great experience working on the sneakers product there within uh, Nike Digital. And yeah, just great experience, met a, a ton of really awesome people and got to see a little bit of how Nike one of the, the most amazing and, and emblematic brands in the world operates it was a real privilege. But going back to your question, JP, I guess in my intro there, I was focusing on the professional development. I think it's worth mentioning because it's relevant to your question uh, about Peloton. During that time, I think in my Citigroup days is when I really started to get into fitness. And it, it wasn't an intentional thing, I would say. It was more... I think just an evolution. And what I had found was the realization that I need to focus on things like mental health 
and I need to focus on stress management and, and I need to broaden my worldview as far as what I focus on and sitting uh, in an office five days a week, you, you really need an outlet and running for me became that outlet. I did start running. I was not a great runner. I'm still not a great runner, but I was a determined runner and I went from running maybe a kilometer literally to the stop sign and back. I entered an event. I, I did a few different things like Tough Mudder and Go Ruck and different events. And I really, it, it's a little bit of a slippery slope. The thing I think, just reflecting on that for a moment, that drove me was, was similar to what drove me in my career, which is curiosity and trying to figure out where is my limit? When will I run out of steam? <laughs> and, and is there a distance that just you reach a breaking point and trying to find that? And trust me, I've reached that breaking point many times and I just keep, I don't know what it is, I keep coming back for more. So I got into the ultra uh, marathon as I said, it's a very slippery slope, at least for somebody that's wired like me, because you start dangling distances like 50 kilometers and 50 miles and, and 100 kilometers and 100 miles out there. And I think to myself, gosh, I don't know if I could do it. And, and I think once I hit that, that to me is an indicator that it's something I should try. And you might fail. And I have failed many times. But just trying, I think, is where the learning is. So that happened, as I said, right around, I think, my city group days, I started running. And it just evolved from there all through my Amazon days, my Nike days. I was doing uh, different events. I did start out right, running 50Ks. Really enjoyed those because they're in the woods, they're outdoors. There's just incredible scenery. Graduated in 2016 and 2018. I tried the Leadville 100 in, in Colorado. I have been back there a few times. And I've also branched out into just the really bizarre world of running 24-hour races, which is different than distance. You you run for time and however far you get is that's who that's who ends up winning. So all of that to say, I had a really uh, strong uh, affinity, if you like, to athletics and to sports, not from a competitive standpoint. I would be the first to say I'm not I'm never going to come first. I'm never <laughs> I'm squarely in the middle of the pack. But it is just something that I find incredibly enjoyable. It's my time to reflect and to get recentered, if you like, as corny as that sounds, and, and I need it. So trying to find a career that aligned with that interest was really uh, something that was paramount to me. And when the Peloton opportunity popped, I just thought, oh my gosh, the universe is trying to tell me something here. I cannot say no to this. <laughs> and uh, I have to explore it. And I have found just a kinship and a, and a in the members and also in the employees, just a, a lot of really people that are wired, not exactly the same, but in a very similar fashion and in a supportive uh, fashion. That, that is what, what led me here. Add to that the, the just incredible opportunity of this company, of this community. What we're working on is really, I mentioned before at Amazon, I got a huge kick out of hearing from customers. And we don't think of customers at Peloton, we think of members. You're part of a community and, and you are part of the family, essentially. And that itself is, is a different way to think about the relationship. And it, it does very much feel that way, that we are uh, trying to live up to the expectations of our members. And there's just an enormous uh, opportunity to do that uh, here. You are listening to The Oldest Podcast. When you're looking to scale your team, or if you are interested in showcasing your company in a future episode, reach out today. Or if you're in the market for a new role, visit our website to view open positions www.aldis.com. Francis, I, I think what's obvious is right the way throughout your career, it's been driven by curiosity in a field, but also the mission behind where you've been at. Look, the, the topic of our podcast is, is broadly AI in action, but but the mm -hmm. message behind it is to cut through the hype behind AI and have individuals working in technology talk to us about how modern data science, data engineering is impacting their business and industry. So it would be great to, to learn about the data team and the broader tech team at Peloton and, and then your role as the head of engineering, what's happening behind the scenes and walk us through some of the projects you and your team will be working on. Yeah, I think that's perfect. So just to set the context, my role I own what's called application software, and the simple you know, rule of thumb that I use to describe that is if a member interacts with it, that's built by one of the teams in my group. So 
if you're on the bike, if you're on the tread, if you're on the web member experience, if you are using our TV integration, it's all part of our team. Similarly, the, the iOS and the digital apps on the Google Play Store, Apple Watch, Apple TV, Roku, and so on. So anything that the members interact with is really uh, what I am focused on. There are other teams across engineering that are focused on things like the back end or the services or the content management systems and so forth. But my focus is on the member experience and applications that they interact with. To refer back to your question, JP, if you think about Peloton and what we offer, it's not just a technology company. It's a number of different companies all rolled into one. And that is relevant because as somebody that likes or enjoys building things, which is, again, something I've come to realize about myself over the years, you always run into situations where you're like, oh, gosh, I wish we had a different sensor. Or what if we had a piece of hardware? Or what if we had software that did X, Y, Z? And depending on the different company I've worked at, that has been a roadblock. Whereas at Peloton, we are fully vertical verticalized. We have manufacturing and hardware and industrial design in-house. We are a media company. We're producing north of 12 hours of original content per day. We have a logistics company in <laughs> as part of the, the business, as well as a retail, physical retail presence. So there's really no part of the creative landscape, if you like, that's not covered by Peloton because we want that full kind of premium experience for our members, soup to nuts. That in turn allows us to do some really interesting things. One of the things you'll find as you get into fitness is just there's an enormous amount of data, whether it's heart rate, cadence, GPS, you name it. You're just overwhelmed as a consumer by data. If you purchase a wearable or, or some type of tracking instrument, I won't mention any vendors or, or, or uh, <laughs> brands here, but what's missing is the insight from that data. So what do you do with it? What do you, okay, I know my heart rate has spiked, but what is the, what's the signal inside that noise, so to speak? And that's really one of the things that's really compelling about what we can do here and what we can offer. Things ranging from performance tracking metrics. We, we launched our Strive score this year, which is a non-competitive metric aimed at, again, measuring or assessing how hard you're working so that you can do that a little bit better each and every workout and really providing insight into the data. And all of that, what's really neat is it's coupled with a member experience that connects you as a Peloton member within the community. So high fives and encouragement and just making sure that you've got the right support and people are showing up. Uh, that's all part and parcel of the experience here. So that's, I think, you know, what some, just a, a, a brief insight into some of the things we get to work on here. Absolutely. Yeah, super interesting. So obviously, Francis, with the ever-growing member base that Peloton is experiencing, started with the bike, now it's become a, a full fitness service, and you're garnering so much data and, and the opportunity for so many different insights. What can we expect as Peloton members to see with, with more detailed analytics uh, and insights into our overall performance? What are the, some of the exciting things that you and your team are working on? Yeah, absolutely. I think I, I, I can't talk about data without first just underscoring the, the the necessity and the importance of putting the members in charge of their of their information. So we always build that into every single decision that we make. I think that's usually an implicit statement, but I want to call it out explicitly here. Um, but let me give an example of something we literally had some press about yesterday, and it's something that we're still working on. It's not quite ready, but it, it, it's ready to start getting some initial feedback on. And that is a, an experience we're calling Lane Break, and that name may change. But what it is, it's a gamification, if you like, of the workout experience. And we're typically known for our instructor-led classes. We do have some alternative workout type experiences where you can just jump on the bike and we call it just ride. You, you can literally just start pedaling and have a workout if that's more your speed. We also have Scenic, which is a dynamic outdoor, non-instructor-led, although we do have instructor-led instances of this, but it is a... Uh, an experience outside the, the class, if you like. And we've added to that now with our latest release of, again, what we're tentatively calling Lane Break for now. And what that is, it's a music-driven game experience where you, almost like a video game, but instead of a t traditional video game where you're using a controller in your hands, you're using the, the pedals and the resistance as input. And depending on your cadence, depending on the resistance that you're operating at, you can move an avatar is the right way to refer to it that represents the member throughout 
a an experience and collect points. It's hard to describe <laughs> over audio. I, I'm realizing that now, but it really is a ton of fun. It's synchronized to the audio, so there's a, a, a bunch of different playlists with just a, an awesome soundtrack. And what I have found is it's actually a legitimate hardcore workout, depending on how competitive you are. And if, if you're like me, you're pretty competitive, unfortunately. Yeah. But no, um, I think you've done a good job of explaining it because it's certainly intriguing for anyone who's familiar with Peloton. Any new uh, additions to the membership is something that we're always uh, excited to see. And, and that sounds like a lot of fun and a break from what, what has been your more traditional instructor-led sessions. Exactly. Yep. So, Francis, I want to get your take now on, look, you, you've been with, with Peloton. You made the, the move throughout the pandemic. You, you're already seeing in the, the, the six months that you're there, some of the exciting projects that are, are coming down the pipeline. W when you look ahead, what are you most excited about for the impact that you guys can have for the product, for the members, but also the, the, in, the broader industry as a whole? Yeah, it's a great question. I can give you a little bit of insight. There's a, a ton of things that we are working on that I can't unfortunately talk about, but I will allude to. I had my impressions of Peloton before I joined the company and my expectations were set pretty high <laughs> and I was extremely excited to join. And every time you join a company, you start to see, okay, now that I'm part of the family, let's understand how it's really operating. And I have to say, I have just been consistently impressed each and every day and each and every week that I've been a part of this this family. The company, and it's not just me, I've been surveying my group and, and understanding kind of their individual journeys as they've been here. What I consistently hear is that this is a company that that tries to walk the the talk, if that makes sense. We we know where we need to be and, and what we need to strive for, and we are uh, committed to, to making that happen from both a uh, community standpoint, as well as a, just a place to work. And that's reflected in some of the acknowledgement that we've received through industry awards and stuff. In terms of what we're working on, again, without getting specific, I would say it's expanding what we can offer to our members in very meaningful ways. It is going beyond what people's impression of Peloton is, which I think we have a strong association to the bike and to the tread. But it's going into new modalities and offering more comprehensive options to, to different customers and members. And it's offering all of that in an inclusive, supportive manner. So we want to make fitness available to everybody and connect the world through fitness. And, and that is, that's really the driving factor behind everything we're doing. We've already, as you would know as a member, we've gone into strength and yoga and outdoor running and, and so on and even meditation and expect that trend to continue and really meeting the members where they are in their individual journeys uh, towards fitness. So it's incredibly exciting. I can't, I'm trying to choose my words carefully here, JP. Oh, listen, <laughs> keep, keep this an element of suspense there because we're all eagerly yep. uh, waiting to see what's next from Peloton. A final question for me, Francis, you've had an incredible track record at working at some of the biggest brands in the world across various industries. And part of that has been building and leading successful engineering teams. As you're now the leading the function at Peloton, and it's obviously incredibly difficult right now to hire talent at the high, highest level, what is it that you say to candidates when you're speaking to them that would get them excited about Peloton over some of the other amazing opportunities currently? Yeah, it's an incredible time, I think, to be in engineering and to be in technology. There are just so many opportunities. And I have to say, just this process, JP, of prepping for, for today and, and thinking and going through it with you today has really reminded me just how fortunate I've been in my career. It's really been remarkable and, and not because of the opportunities that have been provided to me, but more so because of the people that I've been able to connect with and, and learn from. And that I think if there was a secret sauce without knowing it, I think that's what I've gravitated towards is trying to find the teams that are going to teach me something, support me when I make mistakes, and allow me to try things so that I can learn. And I think that is the type of environment we're trying to create here at Peloton. I told my team last week that our organization, it's an upside down organization. I'm not here to manage you. I'm not here to, to lead you from the top. I'm here to support you. And I want each and every member of the group to think of me in that way. The Tour de France was on last over the last couple of weeks and I alluded to, they're crossing the finish line on the bike. I'm back in the team car trying to figure out where we're going to eat and <laughs> where we're going to sleep that night. That's the analogy I wanted people to have in, in their heads. And I, I think the other thing that I would say to people is 
look for teams with empathy. Look for environments that are going to allow you to experiment and try and even potentially fail and find that breaking point. Um, I kind of alluded to that with, with the running examples of me searching for distances where I would start to break down. And trust me, there, you don't have to search very far uh, <laughs> to find those. But I, I often think we're in a, a, environments of tremendous empowerment where we can influence members and the actual customer experience, the member experience. I myself am a member. I jump on the bike at the end of the day and I do a ride. So I get to see my team's output. And honestly, we're all human and there will be mistakes and there might be things that we're not super proud of, but we learn from those. And an environment where you can try those things without fear and learn and build ultimately an even better experience is one that I have been fortunate to uh, to benefit from. It's something I'm trying to put, uh, I'm trying to maintain, I should say, here at Peloton because it's already here. But I would advise people to look for that and look for interesting opportunities that are going to foster your curiosity. I think that's probably the last, that's the last thing that if I had to pu pull it out of the, the history, that's one of the things that I've also been blessed with throughout my, my career. I think that's a great way to, to end the interview. Francis, thank you so much for coming on today and talking to us. I appreciate the level of detail you've given about your journey, the, the motivations behind it all, the, the intrinsic drive and, and the curiosity, which has led you to where you are. Peloton sounds like a fascinating place for anyone who's interested in engineering, complex problem solving, but that's intertwined with it with a mission that's has a positive impact and i think you've done a great job of, of giving us all some insight into to what's in store and keeping us excited about things to come so i really appreciate it francis you're well my, my pleasure jp great always to talk to you and uh, thanks for the opportunity Thanks for listening to this episode of the Oldest Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and any Android podcast of choice. You can also head over to our website, www.aldis.com, to listen to more podcasts, view our open roles, and stay up to date with industry news. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for more great episodes coming very soon.